Hello, pigeon people. Well, this will be, um, if anybody actually listened to part one, um, this will be part two on my little rant about sparrowhawks and peregrine falcons. Uh, and I still need people to subscribe and thumb me up and comment, all that stuff. It just helps the channel. Right, so this is part two. And this this section, I think, might upset a few people. It's not. I'm not intending to upset people. Um, I'm just going to say it as I see it, and you can take what I'm saying with a pinch of uh, with a pinch of salt if you want. So, after doing a lot of reading, talking to a lot of people, and listening, I have people uh, a matter of streets away from me, two or three streets. And in a year, they will lose nearly 40 pigeons. Uh, I have a, another person who's three or four streets away. He would lose 20 on average every year. Um, I talk to people where I buy me, me pigeon food and I listen to what they're saying. Now, the one main thing of all these people that are losing big amount of birds... They all have one thing in common. And the thing that they have in common is they all keep rollers. Now, this is the way I see it. If you if you keep roller pigeons, you've got the biggest problem of all of us. And I'll tell you for why. It's because your birds are too slow. Now, I know there's going to be people out there going to say, oh, well, my rollers are quick. Trust me, your rollers aren't quick. Your rollers always... I mean, the, I, when I kept them 30 years ago, they do that thing where they kind of slow down just before they go into a roll. They slow down, yeah? That means they're vulnerable. They go into the roll, they're vulnerable. They come out the roll, they're vulnerable. The whole speed of them, they're vulnerable. Anybody who keeps rollers and has got problems with... Uh, I'll say raptors, right? Because I'm, I'm, when I say that, it could be the peregrines or or sparrowhawks. Um, these birds aren't stupid. They can outfly rollers with, without even thinking about it. If you were keeping rollers and you've got these birds in your area, what you're going to be doing now, and you probably already started doing it, you're breeding. You're constantly breeding. Because you know in a year you're going to lose 30 or 40 pigeons. So you have to keep them numbers up. So basically all you're doing is, you, is you're breeding hawk food. You're breeding peregrine food. That's, that's, that's all you're doing. Because the simple fact is your beds are slow as hell. And this is how they're getting caught. You look at rollers. And, you know, and you see them and they're up there and they just flutter around. They may as well be ringing the dinner bell. They may as well have come eat me tattooed on the chest. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. And all the people who I hear talking about the amounts of beds and the big amounts of beds that they're losing all comes down to rollers. And they're the number one for me, the number one bed that's getting hit. They're getting hit hard. So let's let's move up the scale a little bit, right? Let's move up to racing pigeons. Physically bigger, physically stronger, physically faster, and yet they get taken. Now, it's not because they're slow, because they aren't slow. They're much faster than a roller. So how come a racing pigeon has been hit and they get hit hard? You know, you look at these documentaries where you see these birds in the nests and you look inside them nests, you'll see a lot of pigeon racing rings. Now, the reason these birds are getting uh, hit is, 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 well, not as bad as a roller, but they're getting, they're getting hit is because they're too predictable. You go around any allotment in this country where these birds are being flown from and you watch them, they go around in a circle. I don't know whether anyone remembers it, but years ago there used to be your, um, and I'm showing my age here, there used to be a programme called The Magic Roundabout. And this is what this reminds me of. 
these birds going round in the in in in, in, a, in the ring. It's 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 weird. Um, all right. So you you could say. Uh, well, pigeons coming back from a race, right? They're basically flying in a straight line where they're coming back from. You know, they the will change the angles a bit, but they the will just go straight. These birds don't even see these these peregrines coming down on them at 200 mile an hour. They don't see it. They're just fixed on a straight line to get back home, and that's why they get hit. They get hit because of that, and they get hit because they're predictable. Let's move up the scale a bit more. Right, high flyers, and I'm classing my birds in this group as well. I'm going to class the bulk of high flyers, um, and tipplers, all these kind of birds. So why do they get caught out? Um, the simple reason for them is, again, they're too slow and they're too predictable. If you've got tipplers. I'll tell you what's, got, what's going on with them. They'll go very high. They'll be right there, up near the clouds. And what will they do? They'll do the magic roundabout thing. They'll just go round and round and round, like something out of Custer's Last Stand. They're too slow. They, they remind me watching them. And it's no disrespect to anybody who, who, who keeps these kind of beds. They seem hell-bent on the, them, them beds flying for like um, 15 hours, 20 hours. That's all. That, but for birds to do that, they need the plodders. They remind me of an old Volvo car that's that's on a motorway and it'll go up and down that motorway all day because it just plods on. And that's all it does. It's a plodder. It's not built for speed. It's built for endurance. And that's the downfall because these birds will just go up there round and round and they don't have any great speed on them. And I'm sorry, I know this is probably upsetting all you, a lot of your high flyers out there, um, and a lot of tippler people, but that's the way I'm seeing it. They tend to get caught a bit less, though. The bulk, and I'll say this again, the bulk of birds that are getting caught in the UK are rollers. Everyone who I talk to who's complaining and, and having a good moan about it, rollers. I talk to them when I, when I go and buy me food. It's rollers. And then the pigeon lads will chime in. And they get caught. And I've told you why. Rollers are too slow. Uh, races are too predictable. And things like tipplers and the bulk of high flyers are too predictable and too slow. These birds that you're dealing with, you're dealing with a, a highly intelligent bird. That bird doesn't just think, oh, I'm, I'll just fly over there and grab one. It weighs everything up. It weighs these birds going round in a circle, like the magic roundabout, and it'll wait to lay in front, and it'll come in either from the top or it'll come in from behind, because these birds are just tell bent and fixed on going round in a circle, and that's what that's why they get caught. And it, it like I say, it, it, it's a similar thing for rollers. Basically, you're too slow. I had pigeons 30 years ago and then I got out of the, the, the hobby for one reason or another. And then I came back into it. And when I came back into it, I knew there was problems with hawks. And this is the reason I didn't go back into rollers. Because I, I, I'm not a person, I'll be honest, I'm not a person who loves to breed pigeons. For me, pigeon keeping is all about watching the birds. I'm not into... I couldn't sit here and honestly say it. I don't mind breeding 20 birds a year because I wouldn't do it. I won't breed birds to feed the falcons and and sparrowhawks and stuff like that. Uh, but I do get it with people. Some people out there might be lucky. You might not have any of these birds where you're living, but you give it time and these birds will spread into that area. No two ways about it. I am going to make a third part on this. Um, that's if I haven't upset everybody, especially the roller people. I, I do feel for you people, but listen to what other people are saying and, and, and read as much as you can and you'll see it. The bulk of these beds that have been taken is rollers. It's almost like they attract them. I mean, it's like a, you know, like a seal... 
that's injured and it's in the water and it's flapping around because it's injured and there's blood coming off it. And then the shark's moving and they can tell by the sound it's making that it's weak. And it's almost like the way a, a roll of flies, it like flutters. It's sort of like the bird must be floating around there in the sky somewhere looking at that or it's sat in a tree before it goes up and thinking, oh yeah, you look tasty. I'm going to come and have a nibble. But it's almost that, you know, it's like, it's like they're teasing these hawks and peregrine falcons. But I don't mean to upset anyone, but that's honestly the way I see it. And if you've got rollers and you've got a hawk problem, I'll put money down. Whatever amount you, you, you lose in a year, you're constantly having to breed. Because if you don't keep the breeding up, that's the end. Because you'll run out of beds. And it's a sorry state of affairs where we have to do that. People should only be breeding to increase the numbers, you know, to get what they want, or to possibly improve it. Not to feed hawks and falcons. But thanks for listening, and I will catch you in the third part of this video very soon. Bye now. <laughs>